Okay, hello everybody. Uh, let's start off and people who come a bit late will come a bit late and uh, but we'll get on with our agenda today. So, let's see like so. So uh, my name is Johan Hokkanen. I work here at CPWA Helsinki as the innovation director. There are my Insta, Twitter and email if you want to contact me after this or, or connect with me on, on LinkedIn, however suits you. A uh, few words, I've been here for around soon eight years, so awfully long time now. And uh, my work here is, is mostly connected to working with innovative cases, uh, different types of, of uh, ways of using technology, uh, um, emerging things, uh, new ways of doing stuff. So not going with your sort of regular flow of, of marketing and things. And today I'll be chatting for about a half an hour. Let's see how long it takes. Uh, I think that should be quite enough. So we'll get through, through everything that I have to say today. And on our agenda today, uh, we will not have any predictions of future because you know it's just i have a hat but i don't want to take any predictions from there and and like in times like this it's always a bit difficult to actually predict on any higher level of understanding what's going on i have no solutions or no tools as well so uh it's a bit different from what you might have expected and as a TBWA representative, I will not go through any of our cool cases that we have done during the, the corona times and, and these times that, that we have been facing now during the last few months. If you want to learn more about those, just go and check out our Facebook page or, or something like that. And the thing is that when Lily asked me to uh, talk here and the sort of name for everything is think good thoughts so i thought that what would be actually better than to actually think about how humanity and how we have always prevailed and how should we look at crisis and has anything really changed that really matters in the end and maybe go a bit away from the you know your uh, set of tools and solutions and the best what's the best teleco tool or or what what's the best uh, prediction on how many people or percentage of people will be working from home from in the future. Like those are valuable, but I wanted to look it a bit different. So today's uh, talk's name is everything is still okay. Just like it has always been. And this is the sort of idea or feeling that I have of the world. And I will explain in a few minutes why. And it really started off, off, or I get got the idea for this talk after we had a project here called uh, Fortum Bipu. And after all the projects that we do, we have an, uh, a session where we give feedback to other people and uh, to talk with. There is some guy at the door, sorry. Uh, to talk about how the project went and what we want to see from other people and what we what we uh, value in them and in, in what they have been doing. And I got this feedback of, of uh, just never stress about anything, which is obviously a bit of a lie because I do stress, but I maybe don't show it too much. And in fact, I do not stress too much about things that look bad in a moment. So I wanted to... Uh, sort of maybe start to explain why I feel like that and why why the way that I try to live and work without sort of stress and without the fear of, of the unknown. And I would say that it all boils down on, on reframing. And some of you might know from, from uh, design thinking, the term reframe, uh, and it's all also used in, in many other places. But it's about reframing what you see, what you think, and, and what you learn and what you experience. And in these cases, I was thinking about reframing your crisis. So what if we look look it from a bit different point of view and, and what we can find when we are looking at, at this crisis, for example, in the context of marketing or just in the context of, of human life from a different perspective than what you would first do in the like first 
sort of, you know, quick thing that now, oh, now everything's changing and we are all, all going to suffer. And as said, and as everybody who have eyes and some sort of connection to the real world know, we have had these things now. When we were, or I, I started to make this, uh, there was only the corona, and then now the Black Lives Matter movement has been growing, which is a great thing for the world, but at the same time, then you have your uh, police violence and all that. So we have huge crisis going on. But then if you think about it a bit, actually there have been quite a lot of more crises going on before that. For some, at least for me, Trump's whole period of, of, of governance has been a crisis. There is the stuff that's going on on the Mediterranean Sea. Then there are cr crickets who are eating all the fields in, in, uh, in Africa. The stuff that has been happening with the Black Lives Matter before, so it's not a new thing. The unemployment, the glaciers are falling down. And then there is the Brexit, and you shouldn't remember, uh, forget climate change. And, uh, and of course, there, there's ISIS somewhere, probably still doing bad stuff. So in the midst of that, it easily feels like this dog in, in the burning house. So it's not trying to downplay the crisis or what's going on, but it's uh, thinking about it in a bit different mode. And as human beings, we tend to uh, have this bias of, of things that are happening currently. We look at, look at them and feel that they are more uh, effective and, and more scary and bigger and worse and, and all that than the long-term things that are coming. And we have this bias of, of not really seeing the long-term world, but we only see the current and what's going on, what's happening right now and, and like that. So, so we tend to see the current monsters huge and the long-term monsters big, which is probably one of the reasons why people tend to take climate change easy, but then when there is uh, corona, everybody are, are in crisis mode. So maybe the question then is that, are we then effed up long-term as well? Because we can see that there are, are these crises that has been going on and they will pop up and come again and again and again. I'm painting quite a dark picture here, but let's hope that we can find something positive out of this. But yeah, in a sense, there will be a crisis and there, ha there has been crisis. And that's something that we ha just have to live with. And I think one good point is that when we are reframing things, even the way that we look at the current crisis, is that we need to have perspective. One of my favorite writers, uh, I don't know how to say his name correctly, but Erlend Loe, how you would say it in Finnish, wrote this book called uh, Naive Super some quite some time ago already and had this quote of uh, perspective is something that we should be able to get as a vaccination. So it's many times hard to look at things from perspective. We tend to stay in our own heads and, and it's really hard to get away from there. But if we look, for example, this is from Hans Rusling, maybe some of you have seen his stuff, but if we look the life expectancy expectancy and income during the last few hundred years. We see that actually as a whole, as a people, long term, we are not fucked. We are actually doing quite good and our life expectancy is getting better. Our income is getting better. And that's for all the people in the world, not just the richest, richest uh, countries and people in the world. So if we look at, look at this from a historical perspective and sort of think about it a bit differently, of course, you know, comparing World War One that we see here on the left to uh, the current crisis, it's a bit different. Of course, not again downplaying the current crisis, but we understand that it's it's heavily different from from what the world has seen, and and the world has seen way worse. And if we look at the earlier crisis that we have had, just during the last hundred years, if we start with World War One, it was a terrible time. But if we look at from the perspective of what it gave to us. The one simple thing that it gave to us was a tea bag and a lot more. So there was a lot of innovation, a lot, a lot of things created in the midst of crisis. So basically, without World War One, we wouldn't have tea bags. 
the Great Depression, 1929. It gave us the, it gave us the chocolate chip cookie, and actually through that started a company called Nestle, which is doing quite quite fine nowadays in the world. And it was created all by accident during the times because there wasn't enough enough dough, so some chocolate was added because of that. So we have that. If we look at World War II, the worst thing that has probably happened to the world so far, that gave us culture, art, the best art that we have probably seen in the human history so far. Here only is the, the great work of uh, Pablo Picasso in the background. The Cold War started off ARPANET, which is the sort of base for internet. And without that crisis, we probably wouldn't have internet and the world would look very different today. And then the oil crisis. In the 70s, there were oil crises, few of them, but through that we actually started to create smaller, smaller components and started to look more into, uh, into technology. And out of that, uh, we basically nowadays have our laptops and our, all the beloved devices that we use every day. So when we reframe the crisis a bit, we can find that there is a lot of good that comes out from, from all of this. And the one thing is that we cannot look at the current crisis and only see the bad, because there will be that and there is a lot of that. But we need to reframe our thinking to see that there actually is good that comes out from this. Probably, okay, this is future prediction, but more people will be working from home and maybe spend more time with their families because of this. So we'll see what happens. And humanity that tends to thrive after crisis. This is something that has been seen always, like the biggest steps in, in technological, in, uh, in monetary, in, in healthcare and all that has been always taken through crisis and after crisis. So this is something that we want to look at and want to keep in mind that all, although we are going through dark times and we, we have issues of, of, uh, of not knowing what's going to happen, we see that humanity is, uh, as a whole is such an entity that we come out as winners and usually better than we were before the crisis. And although it's, it's hard to see when we are in the dark, that's something that usually happens. And we can see it from history, which is the only sort of guidebook for the upcoming moments of crisis. And when you look at it from the human perspective, uh, one of my favorite sort of health, self-help books, which usually I don't like too much, is by Mark Manson. Uh, the book is called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, The Counterintuitive Approach to Living a Good Life. And he speaks a lot about, a lot about how we need to have for problems and we need to have crises to be happy and to actually uh, thrive as a human being. So to be happy we need to we need something to solve. Happiness is there for a form of action which basically in the times like these that we have been living now means that this year we have had a lot of reasons to be happy because there have been a lot of things to solve from you know starting your work at home and and thinking about if you really want to put on pants because you don't have to, to the fact that you have to cook your lunch, you cannot get it anywhere and, and you have to find new ways of, of, of staying fit while you're at home. So 2020 is through this perspective, the year to be happy because we have a lot of things and a lot of problems to go through and, and find ourselves after them as better people, better companies that we have been before this crisis. So it's time to create, as it always has been. Our, our business, our, uh, our market and the things that we do is that we look at a problem, we use our creativity, may it be on what, what uh, level, whatever level, and we create our way away from the hole and away from, from the problem and we fix it through our creation. But, and that's something that has always been and it will always be. So this is something that actually hasn't changed. There hasn't been a big difference on what we have to do and how we do it. It's just about the sort of outer shell of, of things.
And change is the only thing that has been constant. It has been constant before uh, this, this current crisis, and it's something that has been going on all the time. Like, world didn't start to change when corona happened. It has been doing that ever since we saw light for the first time. And, uh, yeah, so, so that's something that hasn't really changed, the change itself. It just has been quicker and needed to be done in, in more quicker pace than before. The way that we look, look at things here at TPWA, which maybe tells something about, or you can see in our cases and the way that we do it, is that we have the iconic idea in itself in the middle of everything. And it's just the medium that we use, the, the limitations or, or needs of that media that changes, not really the idea itself or the human story inside that idea. Everything is based on, on human, human life, human stories, and how we can create something that brings something good into that. But the way that we talk about always changes, and again, through the corona crisis, we have seen that it, everything has changed a bit again, but so it has been doing forever be before that. And here is a little story from a few years ago. We were having, having a nice little drink at, at the bar restroom and we were a bit tipsy and one copywriter because i'm i'm from the sort of digital era of, of life and uh, had been living with all the all the digital solutions for for all my life almost and uh so i'm pretty used to you know new new medias new softwares new new application coming up and all that i was having a chat with one old older copywriter who is an excellent copywriter but had an issue and that issue was something that he was able to talk about when we were a bit tipsy and he told me that he's he feels that he's lost he doesn't know what to do like there are all of these new things at that point it was twitter it was facebook it was new new social media platforms and the answer that i gave him then or or the thing that i said is about it's not his job to understand all the solutions and and platforms and whatnot he's a copywriter so his job is creating human stories interesting stories that create emotion in people and and that and it doesn't really matter if it's posted 160 uh, characters a time on twitter or or as a, a 30 second video on youtube it's about the story that's behind what's being or what's being shown on the media so that's something that has been going on from the get-go of, of a human species, that everything changes, but we as human beings stay quite the same. And if you look at look at brand stories or, or brand level of this thing, these are things that will stay the same, hasn't changed probably forever. But it's all, all about creating an emotional connection, hearing other people's opinions, finding the uh, brand's culture fit, choosing the right values and, and giving people positive experiences. These are the building blocks of, of, of creating brands and creating, creating a brands that can thrive in whatever time and through, through whatever crisis. And even if we go a bit simpler, human story hasn't really changed that much either. So we eat, sleep, exercise, socialize, and create slash work. And it's something that during the times when everything changes around us and you know the sort of circumstance changes this is something that really doesn't we are still basically the same animals that are used to living through the maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs and this is basically the basic setup that we need to 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 be happy happy so i was actually talking quite fast but now we are ending this sort of speech part and maybe giving you, or hopefully get, I gave you a nice little new perspective of looking at things. Here are a few books that I, I recommend you to read. I think some of them have been actually quoted in, in the earlier sets, sets at least from the uh, 
Beam Your Creative guys were talking about the Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. Then there is the subtle art of not giving a fuck, which isn't really as bad as, as, as it sounds. And then the factualness by Hans Rusling, which is all about understanding that although everything looks that it's getting worse and worse and worse, actually as humans, human species, we are doing better than we have ever done before. And then there is the naive super from Erland Lowe, which is just a nice little read that you can read in, in 15 minutes and have a few giggles and maybe found, find some uh, something to live by. So yes, as said, everything has changed and will change, but so everything changed also the day before the corona started to happen. So we're living in a change, changing world, but we're living in a world where human beings still are the same and only the things around us happen. We can still talk to each other with the same empathy and the same feelings that we have always done. So reframe your crisis, look at it from a different point of view, and maybe everything will work up, uh, out a tiny bit better. That's about it um, on my end. If you have some questions, want to talk about something, send some uh, Q&A or chat on the Zoom app. Okay, I see no questions or uh, comments coming up. So I will thank you and wish that you will have, oh, life keeps me going on and my family and work and being able to create the little assassin here. I'll need to uh, actually finish Creativity Inc. by Ed Catmull that has been on the last 100 pages for quite some time. And actually that's something that I recommend for everybody to read. It's a great book about creating a creative culture in your, or in your working place uh, through the eyes of, of Ed Catmull, who is the, the uh, uh, founder of, of Pixar. Okay, I think we are done here if no other questions are rising. So uh, I'd like to thank you and wish you a great uh, end of Thursday and hopefully it won't rain today too much. So thank you. And um, wait, what? Uh, the last book that I'm reading is uh, Ed Catmull's Creative Creativity Inc. I'll write it here. All right. Cheers, everybody. Have a good Thursday.